Hi everyone and welcome to Linea Abacus. My name is Genevieve Gruis and today I'll be going through a place value game known as How Many Ways. For this activity you will need two 10-sided dice and one 100 bead Linea Abacus. Start by rolling the dice and assigning the digits to the tens and ones column on a place value chart. In this example we'll use the numeral 56. The base 10 number system uses positional notation, which means that each digit will have a different value depending on where it is placed in the numeral. In the first example, the 5 is placed in the second position, which means it represents 50 or 5 tens. The 6 is placed in the first position, which stands for 6 or 6 ones. Alternatively, we could have placed the 6 in the second position to make 60 or 6 tens and the 5 in the first position to make 5, or 5 ones. Let's count by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 4 less lands on 56. You can use number bonds such as make 10 to find 56 efficiently. Starting from 0, let's see how many 10s we can make. 10 folding on the string means that we are making group sizes with 10 beads. Any leftovers are known as 1s. We can use arithmetic to explain what is happening on the abacus string. Two arrays are shown, and here we can see that the numeral 5 counts the number of groups of 10 and the six leftovers are thought of as six groups of one. The arithmetic shows us how to name the last bead as 56. Let's look at another way to get to the 56 bead. In this example, we will partition the number 56 into 54 and 2. To get to the 54th bead, we are trialling a different group size. Take a moment to pause the video and discuss what end folds could be used to reach the 54th bead. We decided to use 6 folds and exactly 9 of them. The arithmetic shows another way to name the last bead in the order. In this model, the numeral 9 counts the number of groups of 6. In other words, this shows 9 sixes, and the two leftovers are thought of as two groups of 1. Using the coloured rows on the string, we can see that 9 times 6 is 54 and 2 more makes 56. If you are having difficulty multiplying by 9, you can split the operator into two parts, such as 5 and 4. This is clearly shown in the second figure, where the 9 times 6 array has been split into two arrays. This means that 9 times 6 is the same as 5 times 6 and 4 times 6. When you add all of the sections, you still get to the 56th bead. Now we'll look at how we can use partitive division to fold the abacus string into two equal groups. Here I'm putting bead number 1 next to bead 56, and I'm looking for the midpoint. This will help me find which number, when doubled, makes 56. I can see that 56 can be partitioned into two groups of 28. For each group, I will now find different ways to represent 28. For the first group of 28 beads, I decided to fold them into four groups of 7, and for the second group of 28 beads, I decided to fold them into two groups of 14. The arithmetic shows what's been modelled on the beads. Here, we can see two different arrays, a 7x4 array and a 14x2 array, both of which represent a total of 28. When we combine them, we still get to the 56th bead. This time, I will partition 56 into 40 and 16. Follow along with the video and discuss with a peer how I thought about 40 and 16. The two arrays show how I thought about the numbers. 
40 is modelled as a 20 times 2 array and 16 is modelled as an 8 times 2 array. In the number sentence, I used brackets to show what I would do first on the linear abacus. In the next step, I factored out the 2, as I noticed that both arrays had the numeral 2 as an operator. Now all I need to do is multiply 28 by 2. This can be presented as a new model. To make the calculation easier, I will split 28 into 20 and 8, and I will distribute the 2 across both of these terms. This means I will multiply 20 times 2, then I will multiply 8 times 2, and I will combine the results. Thank you.